Welcome back to Becoming a Published Author is Fun. If you don't understand that title, check out episode 8 and I will explain it. We are in episode 36 now and we are now looking at time. You'll notice I no more, normally I just have the words up there. I got an exclamation point this time. Why? Because time is a very important subject that I really want you to spend some time listening and watching. So, I don't have time. Ever said that before? I have. Uh, most of you, most people, I, I, I have done that. I don't know if there are any exceptions. But the thing is, we get so frustrated, so involved with so many things going on in our lives that it just looks like, oh, I just don't have the time for this. Where is time going? It's going back so fast. So one of the reasons it goes by so fast is we don't have any control over it. We need to have control. Now I've mentioned the idea of control many times in the course of doing this uh, podcast and other posts that I've done. Control is important. And controlling time is exceedingly important and so I want you to take time and to today watch this video uh, and just see where it might help you so do you have priorities in your life I can tell you three right off the bat you're a Christian so church should be a priority in fact if you you into the Bible at all church should be your number one priority even more above the family because it is your relationship with God. Uh, the whole idea of a Christian is that it's not a religion, it's a relationship. We have a relationship with Jesus Christ and he wants us to do things. And so we need to spend time in the church, which he founded, and would be in the church, the local church, where you are not only taught the word of God, you are you get to see examples of the word of god and you get to fellowship with other christians and so church is a very very important aspect of your christian life and you don't want to um treat it ca uh, cash uh, uh callously the you want um or even foolishly you want to spend time with other christians Worshiping God, reading God, meditating on God's Word, finding time to spend with Him so that you can do the rest of the things you want to do and to do it for Him in a way that He would be pleased with. So church is, a number in my book, that's the number one priority. Number two, family. You have a wife or you have a husband. Whichever the case happens to be, they should have a priority in your life. I, uh, you have kids. They should be a priority. Now, I've never had children. God never uh, blessed us with children. And that's because I believe, and my wife believes also, we were able to then, instead of being focused on our children, we were able to be focused on other children, other people's children, teaching them the Word of God. We were, got involved in Sunday school and soul winning and different things of this nature where we had an impact on others. And so that is something uh, that, for us, that that was a, a blessing to us. I mean, we may not have been able to do some of the things we did. We may not have had time to really uh, have children because we were so involved. That if we had children, we wouldn't have had time to do the, some of the things we did in the church. So there's things that you have to watch and, and make decisions about, prioritize in your life. But the, in the family, the wife and husband should be number one. Now, I know there's out, some of you out there who say, oh, no, 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 the children are number one. Well, think of it this way. If something happens to you, what happens to your children? They no longer have you. They need you. They need both of you. I've heard too many stories of men and women, good men and women, good parents, they spent time, maybe even quality time, with their children. 
The children grew up, left home, and now they're sitting across the kitchen table looking at one another and saying, who are you? That's not right. You met together, you met, you got married, you had children, you raised them, you should still know one another. You know what? It doesn't take a lot to show somebody that you appreciate them. Uh, my wife, uh, Teresa, who's now in heaven, but uh, and, and myself, we did little things together. Sometimes we'd take little weekend trips, what we called mini vacations. Sometimes we just would get out in the car and go for a drive, go somewhere. Sometimes we would do uh, uh, just go out to eat together do things together so that when we get to that stage uh, older years whether we had children or not we never lost that love for one another the very last word she ever spoke to me was i love you can't get any better than that folks but so don't sacrifice your family your your marriage for the children and don't sacrifice your children for the marriage they de deserve your uh, priority in your life. Now you might say, wait a minute, you're contradicting yourself. No, husband and wife need to have priority, need to have time with one another. Parents need to have time with their children. Children need to have time with their parents. They all work together. Time, time, time. It's a very short word, T-I-M-E, but we all need it. And you need to have time with one another. How about your job? Well, that takes time. You might take time to get there and, and, and get back. And then typically a, a job might be eight to eight and a half hours if they, uh, you throw a lunch in there. Uh, so your job, it can be more than eight hours. Uh, so the thing is, you put the time in it. The business that I am, I'm uh, the uh, TNR Independent Books, publisher, author, teacher, coach. These are all individual jobs within a, uh, within a job. Well, they all require time. And so as you add jobs onto your, your list of things to do, that's more time. And so you see how I'm saying how time impacts all parts of your life. Well, there might be other things. Maybe you belong in a sport team, baseball, uh, soccer, football, basketball. Well, they meet at scheduled times, don't they? They meet, they practice, and so forth. That's some time that goes to them. Uh, maybe you're in a club where you're going to spend, spend some time, maybe once a week or once a month, however often they meet. Uh, maybe uh, you have some competition that you're into. Or maybe uh, you're going to school and you have to take time to study and to take tests and to progress along in your uh, your studies. These are all important to you. And so we come down to this statement right here. You make time for what you want to do. Um, you want to, some of you may be taking a, a, um, may be taking a course. Could be with me, could be with somebody else, could be wh wh whoever, it doesn't really matter who. What matters is, is the time. It takes time. Now, I know in our course, we allow you to, to uh, they're not, uh, they're not um, except for our live meetings, most of it you're going to do at home at a time that is convenient for you. And so there's that time again, and but you're, you're in control. You're prioritizing. And so you want to take the time for what you're doing. And you will do it. Same thing with money. Uh, if, if somebody wants to do something, uh, wants a certain product or service or whatever, and that's important to them, they will find the money to do it or get it. It's, that's something that, uh, again, they've, they've done studies on these things, and it bears out that what people want, they're going to do. If they will need to do something and they need time, they're going to find the time for it. If they need money, they're going to find the money for it. Uh, and there's you can I, those are two of the top of, uh, pop into my mind, time and money. But the, uh, the energy. How about your energy? 
Oh, I'm tired. Well, I don't know. I, I'm kind of tired. I don't know if I want to do that. You find the energy for it, too. Perhaps there's some reason why you don't have that energy and you find a solution to whatever is causing your problem. But you, you need to emphasize what you want. You prioritize. I've used that word a number of times. You make time for what you want to do or for what you want to have or whatever. And how you do it? You set a schedule. Now, there are all types of schedules. I have here a wall calendar, which I have actually on my desk. I also have, um, uh, I have a folded calendar like this. And it's kind of wrinkled, and, and, but it's uh, like this. It's got a lot of writing on it. So as you can see. And the thing is, I keep another calendar. Now that one I showed you is my personal calendar. But I also have a business calendar. So then I know to do posts like this. I know to do, uh, there's other jobs I need to do that in line with the business and so i use a schedule and that schedule as i add students will get busier and busier and busier but if i have a calendar i can find the time now oh they can go in that slot they can go in that slot and so i can find the time to handle that student or that client so you need to have a schedule to maintain one you can, uh, you can have, have one on your phone or on your computer. Um, my coach has one he uses on his computer. So if you go in, when I first went in to, uh, and uh, signed up for his program, I went in and he provided me a calendar. I went in and, and said what, what time was convenient for me. I put a check mark in it and then I was committing myself. But in the process, because it's his program and everything, he was committing himself that the two of us would meet on that particular time, day on that particular time. So it's very, very important that you have a, a schedule, that you maintain that schedule. If you don't know how or you've never done it, find out how and then practice it. Do it. And how do you practice it? It's just simply by doing it day after day after day after a while it becomes something that's second nature to you. The next thing you need to do is to commit it. Commit, committing yourself to something is, can be scary. And people just back off on that whole concept. But think about this. When you got married, you committed yourself to that woman or that man. Actually, if you go all the way up here to church, when you got saved, you committed yourself to serving to living for God and to doing what he wants you to do, uh, which part of which is going to church, worshiping him, and, and all the things associated with that. So you, you made some decisions. You made some commitments. So don't let it scare you. A commitment is, n is not something to be afraid of making. It's something that you need to make. And the more the commit yourself to time, the energy, whatever it requires for you to do what you want to do. Now, having said that, I'm going to contradict myself a little bit here. You need to be flexible with your commitment. So let's say that you're a family and you got children. How many of you, and I can't see you, so I don't know if you, you can raise your hand. I still wouldn't uh, know whether it was you, you raised it or not. Uh, but you got children. And so you and your wife, uh, oh, you schedule yourself for something that you wanted to do just to do. Your kid comes home from school. Mom, I have this project. I get to, I get to do this and this and this and this. Oh, son, when is, this, when is this going to take place? And it's going to take place on the very same day, same time frame, as you and your, your husband or you and your wife, uh, well, in this case, husband, uh, uh, the, uh, you were planning to do something. So what do you do? You become flexible. And so you, you have to change. Well, since it's school that has scheduled this thing, you're going to have to change your own schedule. And I would, I, having not been a parent, I don't know the facts on this, 
But if I was a gambler, I would say you typical parents have to be flexible on a daily basis. Well, that, what about your job? Do you have to be flexible there? I know I have had to. Certain things happen. You have a job assignment. Well, maybe to get there, you got to get to the take a elevator to get there. Well, the elevator is being worked on. What are you going to do? Well, oh, I'll try the stairway. I've actually had it happen where the stairway was the elevator was down and the stairway was down. And uh, I remember seeing a, a woman whose job was uh, uh, working a service elevator. And they were working on a service elevator. Well, she had to find something else to do uh, to use that time up. They, she couldn't go home. The people wanted her, 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 wanted her there. So that as soon as that was available, she would step in and do it. So she had to find something else to do. She had to be flexible. Commitment and flexibility go hand in hand. You're going to be, uh, you have to have a schedule where there's some commitment to that schedule. But you also have to have the willingness, the flexibility to change that when it is needed. And that is something that uh, a lot of people just don't feel comfortable doing. Some people don't, uh, are afraid of having a schedule. They're afraid of commitment. Or if they have a schedule and commitment, they're afraid of, of being flexible. If they're too flexible, things are going to fall apart. So you got to have a, a plan that works for you. And so these are things that you need. You need a schedule. You need to be committed to that schedule. And you need to be flexible enough that you can change that schedule and still get the work done. And so that's a very important time is it's passing by, folks. When that time, that hour, that minute goes by, you don't ever, well, that's not good English. <laughs> you never get that time back. You never get that opportunity at that particular time back. If you want to do that uh, and you miss that, that Maybe you might be able to do it at a later time, but that particular time is gone. And sometimes that's the only time that we really have to do something. And so it doesn't get done. And so that is it for today, episode 36. And we will see you, I will see you in the next episode.